Hello everyone, I'm RecV5. And I am Sandman99. And welcome back to G9-13 playthrough. Yes. And, uh, we, uh, put up a little poll the la after the last episode. To find out what people wanted us to do next, and it looks like the majority of people who responded to the poll want us to go to Far Harbor. So, I guess we're going to start working on that next. Alrighty. And uh, because of that, while well, we did a little bit of a wardrobe change again here, uh, I think I've worn this outfit before, but it was quite a while ago. And the uh, hat is actually part of a, a mod called Absolutely Headwear. Okay. And uh, the hat is actually a legendary item. Uh, where are we here? There we are. That uh, has the... Uh, uh, legendary that reduces damage from mire lurks and bugs. All right. So, so it seems like it's a good uh, uh, thing to wear to go to Far Harbor since there are a lot of mire lurks and bugs there. Yep. And uh, of course, uh, I've got holstered on the back here uh, the new exotic weapon that the alien leader gave me. Yeah, the fire lance. <clears throat> right? The fire lance, and and you can actually do the fire lance up as either a pistol or a rifle. Okay. And I basically put a rifle stock on it, which is why it's holstered on the back. If I put a pistol grip on it, then it would be holstered on the hip, yeah. right? Yep. However, interestingly enough, even though it's got a rifle stock on it, the animation is still pretty much like a uh, two-handed pistol grip kind of thing, right? Yep, yep. It's like a pistol stock. Yeah, kind of. But anyway, uh, we're going to be... It, it, apparently, the way it's set up right now, it uses the rifleman perk. Right. Which, yep. is, which is to my advantage a little bit because I uh, don't really have... I didn't really invest very many perks in the Gunslinger. So I'm not really all that good with pistols. And of course I put my former uniform on the mannequin here. So, um, you know, just kind of changing things around here a little bit. And uh, getting ready to go. However, it is evening... So I think we're going to have to have a little nap before we leave. Sofa surfing before you leave? Yeah, a little bit of sofa surfing, but we'll have to eat something before we... Uh... What can we have? Well, we could have... Uh... Oh, I know. We haven't had iguana on a stick for a long time. <laughs> We'll eat. Some, see, we've got even more iguana on a stick now than we had before because oh I've been eat, eating all this other stuff that I've been collecting and cooking, right? You'll never run out of iguana <laughs> on a stick. Yeah. So we'll sleep on the couch here for about 10 hours until it's morning, and then we can head out on our way. You'll need a drink of water first. Oh, yeah, for sure. But that's what the water fountains are for, right? Yes. Oh, there's the doctor sitting there in the couch. Oops, my water fountain. Okay, so I've already actually off camera. I went and I visited every settlement that I currently have, uh, yeah. on, you know, settled. Yep. And collected all the caps and everything else, and spent a whole bunch of money. But you know what? I collected so many caps, I've actually got twenty thousand more caps than I had before I went and. Just collected all the caps out of the workbenches from the uh, various shops, right? Uh, because the shops all generate. Exercise sucks. You're gonna need to use the other gate. Man. I guess I have to use the other gate because that Brahmin is stuck in that gate. Yeah. Anyway, um, I my settlements now have gotten to the point where they generate caps more quickly than I can spend them. That's only because you're not pursuing above ground infrastructure infrastructure projects. Yeah, well, you know what? Those are hugely expensive and uh, look about you. difficult to do. Hope you ain't here for me. And I already did the major one. So, uh, you know, with the overland conveyor system between Red Rocket Truck Stop and Sanctuary Hills. Interconnect all settlements with overland <coughs> conveyors is a sidewalk oh, system. My God. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a people mover system, just like in a big airport, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know which uh, city the Minnesota airport belongs to officially, but I was in the that airport in Minnesota that's between Minneapolis and St. Paul. 
one time. Yep. And it's a huge airport. And they actually do have conveyor belts that you stand on to get people from one end of the airport to the other. It's so big, right? Wow. Yeah. And when you, if you walk along the, in, uh, with the direction of travel of the belt, you can move faster than a person can run. Like, it's, it's pretty cool. I sound like a bumpkin, but yeah, I am. <laughs> yes, I am a bumpkin from the Great White North, where, uh, you know, like the, the largest city in the part of the country of Canada where I live is like just over a million people. So, uh, you know, like we're, we're thinly populated out here and we just don't have big fancy airports with uh, people moving conveyors. Well, I can't say I've ever been to an airport <laughs> myself anyways. I've never gotten on a plane. Yeah, well, you're not missing much, really. <laughs> But well, you should hear how some people react when I tell them I haven't seen the ocean. Yeah. Yep. Well, it is like 2,000 miles away from here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, there's nothing nothing like that around here. That being said, though, I've, I've, uh, I haven't been to the East Coast, but I've been to the West Coast. And uh, I actually did jump in the ocean one time. And it was cold. <laughs> I, my heart just about stopped. And this was in June. Right? Like, Crazy. Wow. You thought you were going to go swimming out there? Yeah, well, I was, you know, it was kind of pouring drunk out that day, and uh, I thought it would be a good idea to jump off the dock where I was <laughs> partying my face off and uh, jump in the water, and yeah, it, like, it was pretty cold. Uh-oh, Somerville Place is under attack, but they're going to have to fend for themselves because I've got other things to do. I'm sure they'll look after it. I should be sprinting to get there faster. Yeah, you should. And actually, I'm not even sure I'm going in the right direction, but what I've figured out here is we're going to have to establish a couple more settlements before we head out to Far Harbor. Because you can build settlements in Far Harbor as well, and it's nice if you can connect them back to settlements that are in the uh, Commonwealth, because then you can share resources with them, right? So you got to get your supply chain set up. So I've got to get my supply chain set up, and right now the furthest in that direction that my supply chain goes is the slog and I've actually been to Coastal Cottage which is the northernmost settlement in the Commonwealth but I haven't actually uh, developed it or anything and there's also the the uh, lighthouse over here too right that I've never never actually been to well that'll make a so, good triangulation if you can open them up yeah well the idea is to you want multiple supply lines in case one of your uh, provisioners gets knocked down or you know occasionally it's possible for one of them to get killed although it doesn't happen very often yep and so it's good to have uh you know like redundant supply lines but maybe we'll just uh we'll just sprint in this general direction here. You'll get to where you're going eventually. So this weapon fires like what's ammunition called fire lance rounds, which are not really uh, readily available in the Commonwealth, but you can convert it so that it will use energy like fusion cells. Yep. Although it's less powerful then, right? Yep. Kind of like the alien blaster, right? Like the alien blaster has its own unique ammunition, but uh, once you run out of it, well, if you want to keep using the alien blaster, you have to... Uh, switch it to to use fusion cells, which are uh, reasonably common ammunition, and uh, it just does then, then the weapon just does less damage, right? Yep. <coughs> a belligerent Mr. Handy. Now that'd be a sight. Well, now say. that is a pretty big ten millimeter pistol that you got there. Look at that <laughs> thing; it goes right from <laughs> right from almost at his hip down to his ankle. That's how oh. long that gun is. Oh my god. <laughs> 
It's his walking stick. Doubles yeah. is his walking stick. Well, now you can understand why uh, you see settlers bashing with guns and melee and stuff like that. It's because he's basically got a five-pound club there, right? Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I've got a... I wonder if I have a quest marker having to do with... Uh, uh, living on the edge. Because we've been briefly to uh, Far Harbor. That's where I got the uh, uh, nice little chainsaw that I've got. The harvester. Uh, I think we're supposed to talk to Old Longfellow. That's That's how they introduce the whole thing, right? You know, like old Longfellow takes you on a trip up to that old ruined observatory where Dima is. And sort of introduces you to the region. So I think that's probably what we're supposed to do. And I'm going to have to... There's, I've got another quest marker on. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll defend. Yeah. <laughs> Somerville Place. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> <clears throat> I just finished... I was just came from there, actually. And I just finished putting up a bunch of... Additional defenses like guard posts and gun turrets and everything else. Those guys should be more than capable of defending themselves. The local raiders slash super mutants slash uh, mechanist robots decided that they would test your defenses. Yeah. Because more guns equals better rating, apparently. Yeah. So, it looks like my hairstyle clips through the back of my hat just a little bit. Ah, well. Some do, some don't. Huh? But I, I also, people will that. notice that I got rid of the pain, ponytail. Because I clipped through real bad? Well, no, the ponytail basically would just disappear and you'd have like a, you know, like sort of like as if all the hair was tucked up under the hat kind of thing. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> so there wasn't really much point in keeping it. So... I don't know if people are interested, but uh, the hairstyle that I got is part of a mod by a guy named uh, Recluse. And he's the guy who actually did that uh, pretty famous quest mod, 50 Ways to Die at Dr. Nyx, I believe. Oh, okay. It's the same guy. Although this is quite an old mod, the hairstyle mod. And it actually is a, does a, a, he does a pretty good job of doing mashups of a whole bunch of the uh, vanilla mods by com combining characteristics of them. Yep. And he also has some all brand new ones too, right? Well, not brand new. This mod came out in 2016. But it's still, in my opinion, the best hair uh, style edition mod in the game because I've, I'm actually running two or three of them. Yeah. And, and at least this guy's mod, hair mods, they have full physics, all of them, and they don't do things like clip through the character's body and stuff like that. Yeah, like the hair actually rests on on, yeah. on the character's body, and, and yeah, you can this, see that hair move there. Yeah, and this particular hairstyle is called Beat Chick, and it looks to me like it's like a, a shaved undercut on both sides. Ah. Uh -huh. And then the long hair just uh, sort of hanging down over top of that, right from, from the top, right? Ah. Uh -huh. But anyway. And of course, uh, you know, like he uses, uh, you know, co combinations of different... I have no idea how he built all of those things to look as good as they do, but uh, combinations of all different types of uh, uh, hairstyles and that kind of thing, right? Yep. Well, let's see here, Lucas. Let's, let's, let's buy some more ballistic fiber from you because we can always use more of that. And we're not overly worried about being miserly with the caps, since is how every place that I stop at, I pick up like 1,500 or 2,000 caps, right? Especially if I haven't been there in a while. Basically, any settlement that has uh, one or more shops at it accumulates caps over time, right? Yep.
here comes Lucas's guards. <laughs> Sometimes they fall behind a little. Well, I'm sure he can take care of himself. Yeah. Well, it's time to eat again. I guess you could ask who's guarding who. Yeah. Well, in a way, I kind of miss it a little bit, but the uh, DWT uh, NPC mods that modified the merchant caravans did some pretty cool stuff with the with all the merchants, right? Like they gave them custom armors and uh, better weapons and stuff like that. Like uh, with that mod in in play, like Cricket, the armor merchant mm -hmm. was was somebody that you didn't screw with, like. They, her and her guards all had like matching custom uh, leather jackets with, uh, um, you know, like a, the the her her own logo that said uh, uh, "Lucky Crickets" or something like that on the back. Yep, yep. And pieces pieces of what looked like customized spiked combat armor and uh, and you know, like they were all armed, like at higher levels, they were all armed with plasma weapons and things like that too, right? <clears throat> so uh, a group of super mutants or a bunch of raiders or something that were foolish enough to attack them usually ended up little green piles of goo. Yep. <laughs> In short order. Like the, the her caravan was even the one that if you get down there early enough in the game even though you might not belong there, uh, uh, her caravan, you might see her traveling through Quincy. Yep. And fighting with the gunners in Quincy and leaving behind a whole bunch of uh, li little piles of green goo, right? A good way to get early game loot? <laughs> I guess so, yeah, because you can go and loot the dead gunners after she's been through there, right? Although without that mod, I mean, they're, they're, they're not nearly as well equipped and well armed, right? Yep. Even trash can Carla, like she gets a couple of custom guards that are apparently her nieces or something, and uh, they have you know like like uh, better than average weapons and custom combat armor and all that kind of stuff. Even trash can Carla, they do a really good job of her. Actually, she's got one of those uh, um, hairstyles where the sides of her head are shaved and then the rest of it's pulled back in a ponytail behind her head. Yep. And she's got lots of scars and, uh, you know, like she, she actually looks tough, right? <laughs> but anyway, here we are at the slog and we're going to have to do something with the slog here because uh, I never ever did put up a uh, settler recruitment beacon here just because I never really had time. So all I've got is just the original uh, residence here. So what if I want to... Um, attract some more settlers to this place while well, I sort of started building a extra building to put more beds in sort of yeah well I put down the, the I put down <laughs> the, 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 the floor for it anyway yeah yeah right uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put a uh, um, recruitment radio beacon up here And then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check in the uh, armor bench or, or work in the workbench and see if I've got any uh, weapons st stored here. Okay, so we got. Okay, that looks like it might be okay. Uh, uh, do we have any 50 cal ammunition here? No. Okay, that kind of sucks. You left it all at your other settlement. I guess I left it all at my other settlement, yeah. Okay, and I don't think I'm really carrying any extra. That's okay. I've got another way around this. So we'll go to the chem station because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn one of these original um, um, residents of this settlement into a provisioner. Because some of them you can do that. So we'll make the uh, uniform... And then a little further down here, I have the ability to make railway rifles. So I'm going to make a railway rifle, and then we'll make some spikes. <laughs> the railway rifle. Default uh, 
weapon of all provisioners in the Commonwealth when none can be provisioned for them? Well, the thing is, you look at a railway rifle, and I mean, this is probably just going to be a base one without any modifications on it. And it does a huge amount of damage, right? Yep. And, uh, you know, it has kind of a slow fire rate, but it still is kind of a semi-automatic weapon. And it, uh, you know, it does like a, a massive amount of damage. It also, I've done some reading on the railway rifle, and it does have the ability to sever limbs and... You know, like, it does extra limb damage, which is uh, something that normally you'd need a legendary um, uh, effect for, right? Yep. So, we'll go up here and we'll see if we can find a uh, um, expendable settler type that's not that doesn't have a name. Okay. Around here somewhere. One of these guys, probably. Yeah. Feel free to look around. Worker. Worker. Okay, well, congratulations, worker. Just looking to trade a little. <laughs> <laughs> you are now a provisioner. So we'll give you the hat and the uniform. And we'll give you the railway rifle. The railway rifle. We'll give you all those railway spikes. There. And then... We'll uh, send you to Coastal Cottage. If we can find it. There you go. Okay, so you are now... A provisioner. Oh, we already got another settler too. I guess I didn't have to pick that settler in particular. I could have picked this one. Well, that's okay. You know, I'm sure worker will do a good job. See, yeah. that's, that's not like a, just a, a generic name. That's like their last name. Their last name happens to be worker. Yeah. Right? So anyway, as you can see, I did a little bit of decorating in here. Yep. Right. You know, put some uh, upgraded toilet stations in. Look at somebody left the lid up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that too. You look in, and there's actually water bubbling in the in the toilet bowl. Like, yep, yep. The guy who did the CWSS or whatever it's called mod really uh, did a lot of little extras there. Like, you can build an outhouse and put like one of those um, uh, wooden uh, seat type things in the outhouse. Yep. And then when you open the door and look inside, you can hear flies buzzing and <laughs> stuff like that too, just like in a real outhouse, right? Anyway, I guess I'm going to have to put in some extra beds here now, because I've now got more settlers than I have beds. One of my favorite building materials is barn wall pieces. Because barn wall pieces use wood and nothing else, right? No metals or anything like yep, that. Yep, yep. So, and wood is by far the most common and easiest to come by building material in the game, right? So, uh, anyway, and just to make the most of the interior space here, I'll put a set of stairs up on the outside of the building. Sometimes I'll put them up like I'll use a half four piece Yep. and I'll put the stairs on the inside of the building, but that takes away from usable space inside the building. So usually... When, at least when I go from uh, first floor to second floor, quite often I'll just put a... You know, like I'll do something like this and I'll put this set of stairs right in the middle of there. So that when I put a wall piece on there, then uh, we'll just do something like that. Then when I put a wall piece on here with a doorway, well then that'll be the entrance to the second floor, right? Yep, yep. But for now we'll just build the first floor and we'll put some beds in here. Uh... Does people need places to sleep? Krushkova style, right? Oh, barrack style, you mean. Yeah, You're going to do barrack style. Yeah, barrack style, yeah. And uh, I also read that settlers have to have access to a bed, but only on one side. Yeah. So you can, to save space, if you want them to actually sleep in beds, you can do this, right? 
because they can still get access to this row of beds on this side, and then on the other side they can get access to that row of beds. The other row of beds, right? Yep. So basically what it does is it kind of gets you the most... It, make, it helps you to make the most of the room that you have. And of course, everybody feels perfectly comfortable sleeping that close to one another. <laughs> you know, nobody ever snores or, uh, you know, anything like that. Anyway, that gives us 26 beds. So I think probably in order to accommodate as many settlers as I could ever get in any stretch of the imagination, I could probably get away with just one more floor on this place anyway. Yep. And then I'd put a um, an access to the roof anyway, just because I like to do things like put high altitude gun turrets on the roofs and and uh, you know power generation and that kind of thing. Yep. Because I like windmills, you know. Like I and I uh, for that reason, actually a long time ago now, almost three years ago I think, I made this mod where it increases the uh, power output of windmill generators because they were just useless because before. they were just useless before and there was and in order to build one you needed to have a whole laundry list of of different components including some hard to come by ones like aluminum and stuff like that right yep yep and so it just made more sense to me that uh, those things should produce an amount of energy that is proportional to the amount of effort and materials that you have to put in in order to build the thing, right? Yep. And uh, actually as part of that mod, because I'm still running that mod to this day, obviously, but I left the small ones untouched because they take the least amount of materials to build. But the medium ones, I boosted their output by one. Yep. So the in vanilla they produce five energy, in this one they produce six. And I boosted the large generators by a fair bit. To I think the vanilla value is 10. And I boosted them to 16 because I felt that you have to have science and you also have to get a large amount of uh, aluminum and some copper and nuclear material. And, you know, like you need a lot of stuff and, and know-how in order to build one of those, right? Yep. And then, of course, I didn't touch the fusion generators because... You know, they already put out 100 units of power anyway, right? So what it does is it just gives uh, a player with middling skills and knowledge the ability to, uh, you know, not just put a whole bunch of little small generators out there all the time, right? If you think that wind wind power is lore-friendly or, uh, or uh, you know, if you're one of those... Uh, you know, environmentalist tree hugger types that likes wind power. <laughs> well, you know what? The, at least the, this kind of caters to the, that kind of uh, preference, right? Or if you want to burn gas, put a whole bunch of large generators in. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might have noticed that at Starlight Drive-In, I've got like a, an entire field full of those things, right? Yeah. In, in order to put out enough power... To run your factory. To, to be able to run my uh, my factory that I built there, right? Yeah, well, you'd need multiple fusion generators for that almost. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I never actually counted up to see exactly how much power I needed. I just kept adding another generator every time it told me that I didn't have enough power. Right? Hey, well, you know what? If there isn't a cloud <laughs> of black smog above your settlement, you're not doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we need to find Coastal Cottage now. And I think we're on the wrong road to do that. We need to go this way a little more. Got yourself all turned around? Well, no, I just went the wrong way around the asylum here. And now my throat's getting dry. I gotta have a little drink here. Two cups a day. <clears throat> yeah, so long as the cups are big enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, you drink like what, four or five cups of coffee a day? I don't know. I don't really keep count. I don't. I don't drink as much as I used to, but uh, yeah, I used to pretty much. I mean, it takes a long time to drink one of these big travel mugs full of coffee, right? Yep. But I used to pretty much have one on the go all the time. That being said, though, they keep the coffee hot for a long time because it's almost like having a, a small thermos, right? Yep. Yep. And uh, so, you know, like a cup of coffee might last for two or three hours, right? 
I think I've been working on this one for a couple of hours already. Oh, this is for that... Uh, uh, remember back when I got kidnapped by that little girl and put into a weird pocket dimension? Yep, yep. Well, this is actually the location where the first mod in that series is is uh, of the, the Kelly Manor series, I guess, kind of. Yep. And it's basically uh, you en end up going into a pocket dimension that this little girl named Madison created because apparently she's some kind of supernatural... Psychic? Hyper-powerful being, right? Yep. We're not even sure what the hell she is, but... Uh, you know, she doesn't mean well to anybody, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> because she, generally speaking, killed all of her caretakers and her relatives and everybody else that she took with her into this pocket dimension just before the war, right? But apparently she likes you well enough. Apparently she likes me, though, because I'm I'm entertaining, right? That's the, the whole uh, theory behind this, I guess. Oh, we're back at Vault 816 here. I remember this place. Oh, look at this. Nice shot. Yeah, well, you know what? There is something to be said about hip shooting. You see how powerful this thing is, though, right? Yep. So even if I had to eventually downgrade it to uh, fusion cells, because I don't have any more, um, you know, like fire lance rounds for it, I guess it would be okay. You know, like it would still probably be a pretty decent weapon. Yeah, especially with your rifleman perks, too. Yeah. Hmm, thought I heard something. Maybe I'm imagining it. But anyway, yeah, I... I uh, Maybe we'll ex someday explore uh, Madison's uh, story a little bit more, and we'll go up here and, uh, you know, like, this is almost kind of like, um, uh, well, basically it was the first mod. It was called the Kelly Manor Horror. Yep. And then the next one uh, was called the uh, uh, Kelly, Kelly Macabre or something like that. Yep, yep. Right? But there's also another one that is related to it, too. And you have to follow these railroad tracks all the way down into this area here. And what it is, is uh, like up at the top of the map here, you basically are wandering around in what appears to be the ruins of Kelly Manor. And down there, way down south on the tracks, well, that is um, kind of like the um, original family home down there and of course since it's by near as well it has all sorts of puzzles and things like that to solve yeah right. so uh you know you, you have to you have to like solving puzzles in order to get the most out of his mods right because that th that i found is a large part of uh a lot of the the adventure mods that he does is is uh Figuring things out and uh, solving puzzles and, you know, that kind of thing, right? That being said, he does produce good work. Yes, he does. Well, I mean, he's got a couple of things that had some problems, like the uh, Radagool mod, where uh, every now and then the, uh, the waves of ghouls would just stop. Yep. And then the only way you could re kind of restart things was with a whole bunch of console commands and stuff, because... He had a counter, apparently, that counted the number of ghouls spawned versus the number of ghouls killed. Yep. And those counters every now and then would mess up so that uh, um, it wouldn't register all the ghouls killed and then it wouldn't spawn the next wave because it wouldn't spawn the next wave until you've killed all the ghouls in the first wave kind of thing, right? Yep, yep. And there was a, you know, it was, it was a bit... Um, you know, like you could you could limp through it by using the console command, I uh, or a series of console commands, I guess, to reset the uh, the counters in between each wave of ghouls. But uh, you know, that was also a long time ago mod too. Like it dates back to around or maybe even before 
uh, Xander's aid. Yeah, one of his first works. Yeah. And I don't know that that problem was ever solved. It was just somebody in the post who was clever and came up with this uh, series of uh, console commands that you could use to, uh, you know, basically reset the counters so that they matched. Yep. Right? So that number of ghouls generated was the same as number of ghouls killed, right? Yep. You know, so it was a good idea. It would have been nice if he would have been able to uh, figure out that particular one because I never actually managed to play the whole thing. Like, I played it through two or three times and I never did manage to play the entire thing through from start to finish without having to resort to those uh, console commands at least once, right? Looks like you've got yourself a hole in the world now. I've got, well, no, it's basically all this stuff you can scrap it, but it's stuff that's not normally meant to be scrapped, right? Yeah. Because it's from the scrap everything odd kind of thing. So it doesn't really create holes in the world, but it, you know, like creates little things like this where uh, you end up having to scrap dirt mounds or roots or whatever that are hanging in midair, right? Yes, my, my clicky controller, you can hear the buttons clicking here while I'm uh, scrapping all this stuff, right? I don't think it picks up on the mic, actually. I don't think you hit the buttons hard enough for it to register most of the time. No? Oh well, I can, I can hear it anyway. <laughs> yeah, we did end up getting a new controller cord. Yeah, but... Uh... Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I am. I'm using the our old uh, uh, Xbox controller here right now because we got a new cord for it, so it works well again now. Well, it just goes to show you, uh, you know, those value budget three pack cables versus like a, a normal like I guess it's for for, for conversion. It's like twelve dollars Canadian cable. Yeah. <laughs> well, you you get what you pay for sometimes, right? And if you uh, are cheap, well, you get cheap. And if you pay for something that's a little better, well, you pay more for it, but you also get what you pay for, right? Yeah, I think that's like $9 American or something for a cable, or I don't know what the conversion rate is on that. It's usually like 25%. Yeah, well, when you're talking a controller that costs the better part of $100, then I think it's probably worth it to replace the $9 cable, right? Yeah, for those of you <laughs> who don't know, uh, Xbox uh, One controllers cost like $70 here. <laughs> or at least they did at the time that the uh these controllers were bought yeah they probably cost more than that now though with scrap everything i can scrap a lot of stuff and one thing that used to bug me about uh this particular settlement quite a bit is they had this absolutely destroyed house in here that you really couldn't do very much with yep and uh it took up space, and you couldn't really build stuff on it and in, into it and things like that, right? In vanilla. Uh, but with the uh, scrap everything and place everywhere mods in combination, well, then you can actually do something with these. Now. I'm just going to say F5 is your friend so that you don't accidentally yeah. scrap the house. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm, I'm still considering whether or not I should just scrap the whole house anyway and just build something brand new over top of it. But with the ability to place anywhere, I guess you could clip stuff into the house if you wanted to. Yep, I could, actually. Um, actually, I could demonstrate that. If you like. Sure. Okay. So, anyway, we're, we're just cleaning things up here a little bit and getting rid of, you know, like a lot of those vines. We'll get rid of the... Oh, that's mine. I put that there. Yeah. <laughs> I won't get rid of that, but we'll get rid of this barrel and, uh, you know, some of this other debris that's around the edges of the building and stuff like that. 
so you see we got a nice clean tidy hole in the ground there now now that i've uh gotten rid of all of the uh clutter and stuff that's in there right yep we can do something with that too and uh, i'm gonna keep the barn building because it makes a good work workshop You know, like you can put your workbench type things in it and that kind of thing, right? It does have a few little odds and ends that you can scrap in here if you want to as well. You know, like these metal shelves and that kind of thing. But maybe I'll just leave those there. I scrapped these other metal shelves because I was going to put another workbench there. I get around to it. Yep. And I'll probably, once I built an actual house, I'll move this bed out of here. <coughs> So, anyway, we've got the remains of a house here. Uh, we got a little bit more debris there. Some leaves. Rug. Okay. A little bit more debris there. Okay. We want a can and a tin can and a beer bottle. Fishing rod. This is, all looks a little bit furniture-y though, right? So maybe we should just leave this stuff here. Sure. Because it looks kind of decorative and like it belongs. And I can't really seem to get a bead on this this uh, weed stuff here, right? Yeah. So maybe I'll just leave that there for now. Anyway, so what you do is you start off with some floors. And again, I like to use barn kits because even the concrete floor blocks... Like a lot of the other uh, building kit floor blocks and stuff, they also include uh, uh, bits of steel and that kind of thing. Whereas concrete, again, is a fairly easy thing to come by. You can buy shipments of concrete very cheap from a lot of the vendors in the world, right? Mm hmm And uh, so anyway, we'll try and match this up with the... And we may have to do a little trick kind of to get that to match up. Sometimes it just won't won't clip in there, right? The way that you want it to. So we'll line that edge up kind of with the floor there, right? Yep. Try and make as straight of a edge as possible. It looks like this wall is no longer attached to the floor and it's only a partial wall anyway, so we'll get rid of that too. Right? And then we'll just uh, jam another one in underneath there, right? Because now we can get rid of that section of floor as well. Right? And we can stick another one there, and another one there, another one there, uh, another one there. Another one there. Yeah. It's funny how some of these things work. Some of them, they just won't go in, and then you change position and uh, try and stick them in from a different direction, and then they go in, right? Yep. Weird. But anyway, we'll see if we can't somehow... Uh... It might be one of those things where you got to, like, clip it in here and then clip another one onto the end of it or yeah. something. Just like this. Yeah. Right? Yep. Just like that. You give it, you give it another snap point to work with, right? Oop, I had that one. There. Okay, we've got just about got a rectangle going on here now. Yep, close enough anyway. And uh, so we've got some floor here. Oh, look, there's a pile of leaves there that I missed. And uh, so now we can maybe switch to some wood floor. Oops, I fell back in the hole. <laughs> maybe we'll just put a set of stairs in here right now. Like, we'll put a set of stairs in uh, where's about the middle of a block. That looks like the middle of a block right there, right? Yeah, that's the middle of a block. Close enough. Okay. And then what we'll do while we're down here is we'll just put another block in right there. 
<laughs> and there's my idiot savant thing do going on there. And uh, then, well, look at this. Voila, we've got a uh, basement. Just like that. Right? Instant basement. We can put a floor over top of it. And actually, it might be smarter to not put that right in the middle of the block because uh, I don't have any half-width um, wood pe floor pieces, right? Or quarter width or whatever. Like, I have to use these. Yep. So you need to have uh, enough room to be able to do something like this. Oh, maybe that piece wasn't entirely necessary either. Just store it for now. That there. That there. That there. There. And there. There. So now you've built yourself, and I guess if you use other uh, floor tile pieces, right? These ones are pretty good. They snap in almost anywhere. And kind of finish off that floor a little bit. You'll have a little bit of uneven, unusable space over here. But now, suddenly you've got yourself a uh, completely covered in basement. Nice. Right. Oh, there's a rock there. <laughs> and a free rock. Yeah. So, now we'll continue to build our house here by putting some walls up. And uh, you'll notice that even though there's a bit of a hole in this wall here, this one actually kind of matches up with that wall, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, we'll put a doorway there. And we'll put this wall here. We'll put these walls in, right? Yep. And we'll just kind of pretend that this other piece out here is, you know, like, not really a thing. Right. It's unimportant. It's unimportant. We could put another doorway over here, though. And then... We can put some floor pieces up on top of here. Because we'll make this a multiple-story multiple, multiple story building as well, right? <laughs> Settlement building with Bob Ross. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to claim to be Bob Ross, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, that guy is a legend, right? <laughs> but, yep. But, you know what it would be smart to do? Is move this doorway piece over here. Yeah, oops. Yeah, just like that. Then we'll just put a, a regular solid wall piece over here. There. Okay, nice airy uh, open space. It looks like this... Like, this structure is just a teensy bit wider than the, you know, like, sometimes you get oddball things like that, right? Yep. I guess if you wanted to uh, fill that in, the little concrete post things would work. Um, actually, I'm going to try something here because I did install... One of the more recent mods that I installed uh, adds pieces to wood, the wood kit. And one of those things is wall pieces, right? Although I'm not sure I can get it to snap there. But you can see that maybe I'm just at the edge of the floor piece there or something. So it's not going to... doesn't want to snap there because there's no floor piece to snap to. Although that looks like it might be right there. Oh. Oh, except that that floor piece is out here in line with the wall, right? <laughs> Which is unfortunate. But maybe we'll just go, uh, that's not going to work out. So maybe instead of trying to do that, we'll just do this. And then uh, we'll fill that little space in. Actually, we might be able to do the, the uh, we'll see what the half wood wall thing looks like. Over here. Oh, okay. It doesn't want to snap there. It wants to snap in a funny place. In the middle of that floor tile piece. Right? Part of the complexity of working with place anywhere. Yep. But anyway, maybe what we'll do is we'll solve this a little bit later. But, uh, for now. 
we'll just do like you suggested and we'll uh we'll kind of jam it in there actually you know what we could do that would be better let's try this okay uh we'll put floor piece up here and then we'll go here Okay. Nope. So those those won't just snap anywhere. Okay. Oh well, guess we'll have to do the concrete wall thing. We're gonna have a little bit of a hole in the side of our building. It's a ventilation hole. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll tuck that one in there and then we'll just snap another one to it right there. Okay. Well, you know what? These buildings tend to be pretty breezy and filled with holes, no glass in the windows, etc. anyway. And, uh... It's an architectural feature. Yeah, exactly. It's a feature, not a bug. Okay. So we need to decide now. Where are we going to put our stairs? I think I'm going to put our stairs in this spot. And this is what uh, you have to do if you want to build stairs on the interior of one of these. And I'm probably going to have to store that one as well. And you put your staircase so... Oh, okay. Uh, maybe not the best place for stairs? No, we'll put it over here in this corner instead. Because then we have enough room. Lots of room. We'll put our stairs there. And then we can use our half floor piece. Our other, another half floor piece here. There. And that's how you build a, when you're using the barn or this also works with the uh, um, warehouse pieces as well. Because they're essentially the same. It's just that the... Uh, types of materials that you need to use is different. Yep. Anyway, we're now we're up on the second floor of our building. We can get rid of a bunch more debris up here and the wire frame of an old bed. And uh, you know, a bunch of leaves and boxes and stuff and things. And of course F5 is your friend. Yep. It's a good idea, especially when you're working with uh, uh, scrap everywhere or scrap everything to have um, some kind of a ability to save your game regularly. Because it's fairly easy to accidentally scrap like this building and screw up everything. Yep. But anyway, uh, now we'll put another floor piece in there and that looks like we managed to line that up not too badly. It looks like you might even be able to put a half piece on the end of that. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking, right? Because we'll keep the awning and we'll keep the little porch on the front. That being said, uh, yeah, okay. We'll just put the little... Or we can put just a single piece in there just to plug that hole, right? Okay, we can probably get rid of the ceiling fan, though. I have to say, I've never seen an outdoor ceiling fan before. No. But, uh, yeah. I guess it's too cold up here to have an outdoor ceiling fan. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so, eh? That being said, yeah. wouldn't it be too cold in Boston to have an outdoor ceiling fan? Yeah. You'd think. Well, I know Boston is probably a little bit more uh, mild climate than what we have here, but probably not that much. You know, it would be a very... I could imagine, because it's coastal, it would be very humid. And, uh, you know, like you might get some snow in the wintertime and stuff like that, maybe. A little bit. Okay, well... And I'm not sure, but I think maybe we might not. Okay, we'll 
we'll see how things go here. Because I don't have any half length wall pieces for uh, uh, barn pieces. Yeah. So I'm probably just going to have to uh, just cut this off right here, right? Yeah. Some, and just not include those uh, original uh, wall pieces in the upper floor, right? I suppose you could always get rid of them. Well, the thing is, though, if you get rid of them, it doesn't leave anything for the awning to hang off of. Ah. Uh -huh. right? Because I've done this before. Right? I see, I see. Although, if, if I'd have been smart, maybe what I would have done was tried starting to build it in line with this wall out that way. But I'm not sure how it would have all turned out if I'd have done that. Well, your alignment for the basement might have been a little off then, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's what I usually try to do is build a usable space down here, right? But anyway, now we can move our bed from uh, the workshop into the house. Oh, and I can see I'm going to have to put a set of steps on here. But I can't just walk in there. Uh. Move the doorway, jam the steps in, put the doorway back. That's absolutely what it's like to pour a step in real life. Well, uh, this is a wood frame step, but it's the same principle, right? Okay. Yeah, whenever they gotta replace your step in real life, the contractor just comes and knocks down your front door. Yep. <laughs> and they're just like, hey man, it's not my problem. So anyway, we could put a door in this doorway if we felt like it and put a door in that doorway. Because this one does have a door in it. Yep. So there you go. We got ourselves kind of a little living room-ish area here. Although uh, the floor tiles that I that I snap in here don't really uh, reach the same elevation as the dirt in here. But oh well. That's okay. Maybe we can uh, do this. This ought to be fun too. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, just throw a rug over it. It'll be fine. That's right. We'll just throw a rug over it. All right. We'll start over here. Because these rugs have snap points. Look at that, eh? Wow. Now that's something that they need to add to the next patch, is grass that gets flattened by things that lay on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, instead of having it grow up through. And then, of course, you can put your couch on top of that rug, right? Yep. And it'll uh, actually just nicely support that couch. Because that rug is actually a structural <laughs> uh, com component of the house, right? So there you go. Got a couch now, right? Oh, need to go and visit the water fountain. Time is it getting to be here? Yeah, it's 11.14 p.m. So I guess we should probably think about taking a nap, too. Yep. Wow, left the thirst thing going quite a while. Well, you were building quite a while. Now you need to eat some more iguana on a stick. Yeah. Actually, we'll uh, cook up some of this uh, doggy that we uh, bagged here earlier. Then we'll have we'll have some uh, mutt chops for a late supper, hey. Mm. So yeah. Anyway, the rugs are from a mod called uh, I think Flo Rugs by Friffy or something like that. Ah, uh. they're by a modder known as Friffy. Anyway, and uh, they have the, he basically made like I think there's something like thirty different patterns for nice. rugs for rugs. And they all have snap points so that you, if you place one somewhere, well, then you can snap other rugs uh, to it. You know? See, this kind of gives me this idea, though, that you could just build a structure that has a top floor of nothing but rugs. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what? That's kind of the way that that works. 
And if we go back here now, if I can find that same pattern again. This one. Turn it the same direction. Oop. There. So we got a fair amount of carpeting on the roof, on the floor now. Yeah. I guess we'll just go crash on the couch here. <clears throat> okay, so oh, oh, the car. So we can finish building this story of this building, I think, and that'll probably be that'll probably be enough to uh, you know, like basically house all, all the, the settlers, beds, all the beds, and uh, you know, like people may have noticed that uh, you know, like I like to put the cot style beds in. Yep. Rather than sleeping bags, you can if you use sleeping bags, it's actually a lot cheaper on materials. And, uh, you can also squeeze a lot more sleeping bags into the same amount of space that you can the, 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 even the army style cots, right? Yep. But, I like the cots. I think it's, uh, you know, nice to give them a half decent bed to sleep on. I don't think it has any game effect or anything like that, but... It's just an immersion thing, right? Yeah, you don't get any comforter or anything, but you get this box spring. Yeah. Tuck those sheets in. <laughs> right? It's just at like 5 o'clock every morning, everybody wakes up and tucks their sheets in, right? That's right. And puts on their boots. Yep. Got to bounce a quarter off of that. <laughs> anyway, we could do something interesting here, too, by uh, just making that little add-on over here. Double awning. Yeah, well, because we can put gun turrets and stuff on this thing yep. that have a pretty good view of the surrounding countryside, right? Yep. And then I'm uh, debating on whether or not to do at least a partial uh, third floor because I'd have to count and see how many beds I could. I bet you I could probably fit all the beds I needed, to tell you the truth, into the, the ground floor and the and the second floor, right? So I can probably put about a dozen beds in there, in, in this space here, probably 15 or so anyway. Yep. And then I'm pretty sure I could definitely fit at least another 20 beds in this floor. <clears throat> and you'd have to have, like, absolutely superhuman charisma to get more than them. I think the most heavily populated settlement that I have in this playthrough is uh, about 34 settlers or something like that, right? Yep. And uh, your charisma is very, very high. Yeah, and my and my charisma is already at twenty three through various buffs and things like that, right? Yep. So I really don't think that uh, there's potential there to need much more space than this. So maybe what we'll do is we'll put out a generator. We'll put our windmill up here, just like that. And then we'll, uh, I think we got enough materials left over here to build another, um, recruitment beacon. Yep. Yep. So we'll build ourselves another recruitment beacon. And maybe for good measure, we'll put up a few gun turrets here just so that, uh, whoever does show up is not completely undefended. That'll probably do for now. See, this settlement isn't bad either because it's got a lot of uh, space that you can plant crops in and that kind of thing. Yep. It's a little bit up and down. So if you want to build some kind of a partition or a wall or something around it, it that can be a little tricky. You know, because there's a lot of uh, very 
drastic changes in elevation yep in this settlement but uh you know all in all it's not too bad so we'll uh You'll eat carrots and like it, damn it. <laughs> no, they'll grow all the carrots, and then they'll leave all the carrots in the workbench, and they'll uh, eat all the potatoes. Yeah, well, anyway, that's enough to give them a start if somebody does show up. Most of the time, these guys are too dumb to, like, self-assign oh, anything. look at that. You just had a guy show up and self-assign, and now he wants a bed. Yeah. Well, oh, now, now you, now got you got another one. Now you got, now you got two, right? That's good. That was fast. Wow, we're going to have to build some more beds here right away. Yeah, now. instant settler. Yeah. Oh, I fell in the basement. <laughs> Could always stick some beds down there too if you needed to. Well, yeah, I mean, that's basically just making the most of your usable space. Right? They're like, hey, Settler, you can technically access that bed. Well, they can, see? They can walk around in here and they can... Yeah. Just don't don't, don't drink before going to bed or waking up. Or you yeah. might fall in the yeah, basement. Yeah, you might fall in the basement, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, we got some defenses up. We need to put a water pump in, I guess. So we should probably do that. So, yeah, we'll just throw a water pump in there. And now, I know we're kind of delaying things here a little bit, but... Oh, yeah, well... I, I want to uh, get the lighthouse one established, too. Which is why I'm thinking that I'm going to leave this guy here un unassigned, because I'll probably go over and clear the lighthouse. And, and then, then turn I'll, him and into then a provisioner. And then I'll come back and I'll turn him into a provisioner just to connect these two. Yep. And then we can head off to Far Harbor, and we'll have our... Uh, you know, supply lines. Our, our supply lines established so that we can, uh, you know, like have at least two connections to to uh, the, the I think it's the old Longfellow's Island type place. That's the closest uh, uh, settlement in Far Harbor, right? There aren't very many settlements in Har Far Harbor, but there are a few. Okay. How are we doing for time here, Recky 5X? We're a little over an hour. Okay, well, maybe what we'll do then is we'll uh, head over to the lighthouse uh, in the next episode because I think there's a bit of uh, fighting and fussing to do there too before we can actually build something. All right. And, uh, you know, like we'll, we'll kind of work on getting uh, the lighthouse up and running and connected to other settlements and then we'll, you know, head on over to Far Harbor. Sounds like a plan. But until then, I'm RecV5. And I am Sandman99, and hope you enjoyed this somewhat more building-oriented episode. Indeed. Have a good one.